During a live stream service at Christ the Good Shepherd Church in Wakeley, Sydney, Australia, Bishop Ma Mari Emmanuel suffered a tragic assault. He was stabbed multiple times in the head and upper body right at the altar, an attack that was broadcast live. Amid the chaos captured in the footage, parishioners are seen screaming and rushing to the bishop's aid as he was attacked by a 16-year-old boy dressed entirely in black. Remarkably, despite his severe injuries, Bishop Mamari Emmanuel found the strength to pray for his attacker shortly after the incident. This response brought to mind the nature of Christ himself. We are reminded of Luke 23:34, where Jesus, even while suffering on the cross, prayed for his execution as Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. In asking God the Father to forgive them, he set a profound example of forgiveness under the most extreme circumstances. The attack not only resulted in injuries to at least four people, but also deeply shocked the community, drawing widespread attention to the bishop's extraordinary act of praying for the individual in the face of brutal violence. Prior to this event, I was unaware of Bishop Ma Marie Emmanuel but watching the news unfold, I was immediately reminded of the biblical account of the last days and the enduring faith of the church in Thessalonica. The Christian community in Thessalonica was enduring severe persecution, a struggle shared by many Christians throughout history. This letter, like many of Paul's epistles, aims to strengthen and encourage the congregation in their faith particularly during times of hardship and persecution. The experiences faced by the believers, including the bishop mentioned, are stark reminders of the persecution that followers of Christ can expect. Throughout history, countless Christians have suffered for their faith, losing homes, lives and jobs due to their steadfast commitment to Christ. Paul reassures his readers that God is not only aware of their struggles, but will also use these hardships to glorify himself. Furthermore, God's awareness of their suffering implies impending judgment for those who persecute Christians. Make no mistake about it, there is an impending judgment for those who persecute Christians. The Bible is very clear about this. Paul vividly highlights the dire consequences awaiting those who reject God. Eternal destruction and separation from God, which the Bible refers to as hell. This is rooted in the justice that is fundamental to God's righteous and holy nature. He would neither be righteous nor holy if he allowed sinners to evade punishment. As Hebrews 10 verse 31 warns, it is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. And Romans 6 verse 23 explains, the wages of sin is death. However, the good news is that because Jesus died for our sins, as stated in 1 Corinthians 15 verse 3, all who believe in him as their savior receive the gift of eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. It is interesting that when Paul addressed persecuted believers, he focused on the last day to encourage them. 2 Thessalonians 1 verses 6 to 10 further speaks of the last day when the Lord Jesus will rectify all wrongs. This prophecy serves as a source of hope and reassurance for believers, affirming that ultimate justice and restoration will come from Christ. The depiction of God as just should provide considerable comfort and hope to the Thessalonians enduring persecution. They are encouraged to forsake any thoughts of vengeance or retribution, trusting God's holy and capable hands to handle any response to undeserved persecution and afflictions. There is a last day coming, a day on the calendar we cannot name, a day that will be the very last of this planet. The day the world ends is the last day. This is a day from which no one can hide. A day so certain and formidable that the Apostle Paul spoke of it with absolute certainty. 
This last day is a terrifying day, a day of fire. For when the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels in flaming fire, it marks the culmination of all things temporal. The very last day, the very last day is a day of fire. It is a day of vengeance and a day of judgment, a day of finality. For human history ends here, and all the events of man are moving us inexorably towards this great last day. Our English language strains at the limits of its expressive capacity to convey the wonder, the glory, and the terrifying nature of this last day. Our imagination falls short in its attempt to grapple with the momentous nature of this event. Can you imagine the shock, the awe, the overwhelming sense of finality that will grip humanity when this last day unfolds. It is a day that will seal the doom of the unconverted, those who have not heeded the call to repentance and salvation. The scriptures warn us of the inevitable, that those who have chosen to reject the gift of salvation offered through Jesus Christ will face a dire fate. On this last day, their choices become irrevocable their fate sealed in the annals of eternity. Conversely, this same last day will secure the happiness of the converted. For those who have embraced the message of the gospel, who have submitted to the Lordship of Christ, this day marks not an end, but a glorious beginning. It is a day of deliverance and redemption, a day when the faithful are gathered to their eternal home where no sorrow, pain, or fear can touch them ever again. The stark contrast between these two destinies could not be more profound. Consider then the gravity of this approaching day. It is not merely another day. It is the culmination of all days. The day when the divisions of eternity are fixed, when the righteous are forever separated from the wicked, as wheat is sifted from chaff. On that day, every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. But for many, this acknowledgement will come too late. This knowledge should not only sober us, but also spur us into urgent action. For as much as this day is a day of wrath and judgment, it is equally a day of hope for those who are in Christ. 2 Thessalonians 1 verses 6 to 10 Seeing it is a righteous thing with God to recompense tribulation to them that trouble you. And to you who are troubled rest with us when the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels in flaming fire taking vengeance on them that know not God and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power, when he shall come to be glorified in his saints, and to be admired in all them that believe, because our testimony among you was believed in that day. God is fully aware of the tribulations and sufferings that his people endure on earth. He understands the challenges faced by those who are called by his name and the actions of the wicked against them. Yet God has set a divine schedule for when he will intervene to rescue his people and avenge them against their enemies. He will not delay beyond his appointed time to deliver us from the tyranny of the wicked. God is just and righteous, and he will faithfully execute his judgment upon the ungodly. God has promised to grant rest to all saints when the Lord Jesus Christ returns, revealed from heaven with his mighty angels to exact vengeance on those who rebel against God and resist the gospel of Christ. The Bible assures us that the peace of the saints will be restored with the revelation of our Lord Jesus Christ. This anticipation focuses on the moment when Jesus Christ will be revealed in his glory. To reveal means to disclose something previously unknown or kept secret. Thus, there is something about Christ that is currently hidden from human understanding. When Christ returns with his saints, many secrets will be unveiled and the ultimate deliverance of the saints will be secured. 
the complete rest and deliverance of the saints hinge on this revelation of Jesus Christ. Until that time, the ungodly may seem to prosper, while the saints face affliction. The resolution to the saints' troubles and the end of the ungodly's wickedness will come through the revelation of Christ. His return will mark the conclusion of this corrupt world and the cessation of the wicked schemes. When Jesus is revealed in his full glory and power, the whole earth will tremble before him. At that moment, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that he is Lord, recognizing his sovereign authority and power. 2 Thessalonians chapter 1 verse 7 And to give you who are troubled rest with us when the Lord Jesus is revealed from heaven with his mighty angels. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 1 verse 7 we find a profound promise for every believer who has faced persecution and hardship. And to you who are troubled rest with us. This verse is not only a beacon of hope but a reassurance that the trials and tribulations we endure are not eternal. The Thessalonian Christians, much like many believers today, experienced significant persecution and distress. Yet, the scripture highlights a pivotal truth. These difficult times are temporary, and a day of rest is assured for those who persevere in faith. This promised rest is more than mere respite. It is a rest in Christ. It represents a deep, enduring peace that transcends the turmoil of our current struggles. It is in Jesus that we find a sanctuary, a place where the weary can find strength and the burdened can find relief. The Lord invites all who are heavy laden to come to him and find this rest, a rest that restores our souls and renews our spirits. As we face the challenges of life, let us hold fast to this promise. The rest that awaits us in Christ is not just an escape from our troubles, but a profound experience of divine peace and comfort. It is here, in the embrace of our Savior, that we are reminded of the impermanence of our trials and the everlasting peace that God offers. Those who have been persecuted for Christ's sake will have rest. You and I live in an evil, wicked world. An evil, wicked world where a minister can be attacked whilst preaching the gospel. The world has persecuted Christians for centuries. Read Fox's Book of Martyrs and you will see what Christians have endured the persecution they have endured. The book chronicles the sufferings and martyrdoms of Christians. Christians have been persecuted. Matthew chapter 5 verses 10 to 12. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceeding glad for great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they, the prophets which were before you. Jesus spoke about the inevitability of the persecution of believers in different places in the Gospels. He wasn't trying to scare us or frighten us, but was preparing our hearts for that which must come. If Jesus had not told us about persecution, we would think it is abnormal when we experience it. John chapter 15 verses 18 to 20. If the world hate you, ye know that it hated me before it hated you. If ye were of the world, the world would love his own. But because ye are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. Remember the word that I said unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord. If they have persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they have kept my saying, they will keep yours also. As Christians, it's crucial to recognize a vital truth. If the world applauds your beliefs and moral convictions, there might be cause for concern. Jesus taught us that enduring persecution for righteousness' sake 
is part of our journey with the kingdom of God as our ultimate reward. He emphasized that we should not mourn when we face persecution for our faith in him. Instead, we are to rejoice when people falsely accuse us and persecute us for his sake, because our reward in heaven is great. Jesus also reminded us that persecution is not a new phenomenon. The prophets who came before Christ, delivering God's counsel to the Israelites, faced significant hostility. Many were hated, some were stoned, and others were killed. One of the profound truths about God's word is its honesty. It does not sugarcoat or conceal the reality of our walk with Christ. Jesus made it clear that as believers and followers of him, we will face persecution. By preparing our minds for this, he aims to strengthen our resolve so that we do not become disheartened or lose our faith when trials come. This understanding is fundamental to our spiritual resilience and commitment to living out our faith authentically, regardless of the world's approval. God is fully aware of the tribulations and sufferings that his people endure on earth. He understands the challenges faced by those who are called by his name and the actions of the wicked against them. Yet, God has set a divine schedule for when he will intervene to rescue his people and avenge them against their enemies. He will not delay beyond his appointed time to deliver us from the tyranny of the wicked. God is just and righteous and he will faithfully execute his judgment upon the ungodly. Matthew 10 verses 32 and 33, Whosoever therefore shall confess me before men, him will I confess also before my Father which is in heaven. But whosoever shall deny me before men, him will I also deny before my Father which is in heaven. Consider how profound it will be on the day of judgment when Jesus stands to confess you before God the Father in heaven. Picture Jesus Christ at your side, advocating for you before the Holy God, saying, this brother, this sister confessed me before men, Father. He followed my words and my teachings. She was an obedient child, even in the face of persecution. Her love for me, Father, never wavered. For me, if there is one person I would want as my advocate, it is Jesus. I am not concerned with gaining the approval of presidents, prime ministers, statesmen, kings or queens. I desire for Jesus to be pleased with me. Let these words resonate deeply within you. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. Stand for Christ in whatever you do. Stand for Christ regardless of the cost. Stand even if the world is against you. Stand for Christ. Stand for Christ in the face of persecution. Stand for Christ in the face of threats. Stand for Christ in the face of hatred. Stand for Christ in the face of persecution. There is a day coming when those who are persecuted for the sake of Christ's name will find rest. Can you imagine anything more beautiful or wonderful than receiving rest provided by Christ himself? And to think we will spend eternity with him. In heaven, we will never have to contend with the sin and wickedness of this world. Indeed, heaven will exceed all our imaginations. Imagine what heaven will feel like the sights, the experiences, the emotions. We know that personal feelings will persist in heaven. We won't be devoid of emotions. Think of the greatest moment of joy and complete euphoria you've experienced here on earth. Now multiply that feeling by a thousand. That might just give you a glimpse of the joy you will feel during your first hour in heaven. To realize I am here, I am finally here. Such thoughts offer profound comfort and anticipation for the eternal peace and happiness and rest that await us.